on this episode of Top Guns, the world before firearms. Three primitive weapons, each one difficult to master, but deadly in hunting and combat. From the Bowie knife, a curved blade with a reputation for fighting, to the Tomahawk, an early American favorite of pioneers and Indians, to the Stone Age at Laddle, giving early man a chance against the woolly mammoths. Throughout history, weapons, both primitive and modern, have been essential for survival. Used on the field of battle, for hunting, law enforcement, and personal protection. As technology advances, rifles, shotguns, and pistols are continually improved to be more precise and effective. On every episode of Top Guns, experts and marksmen will delve into the history, mechanics, and design of these weapons. After being field tested, they will be featured in a shoot-off to determine which weapons truly are the Top Guns. On this episode, we're looking at weapons that existed before firearms. Without guns, man developed blades and throwing darts for hunting and protection. And we've got the perfect specialist here to help. Jack Dagger. What's up, my man? Hey, Kobe, how are you? Jack Dagger grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, throwing screwdrivers into the dirt. He graduated to camping axes and then began to throw knives. As a professional, he performs regularly as the King of Fleeing and has taken home several world championship trophies. Did you not get the memo? This is a gun show, brother. What are you doing here? We can't just shoot guns for the entire series. We're going to go old school. old school today? As old school as you can possibly go, my friend. What is that? This is a prehistoric implement called an atlatl, and this was used to hunt mastodons. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. OK. Got a couple other things over here I'd like to show what you. What else you got? We've got the Bowie knife. We've got the tomahawk. And just beneath it, this is an historically accurate replica of the darts that they used to throw from the atlatl. I want to start with the knives first. You betcha. This is a Bowie knife, is it not? That's correct. The American frontier was a dangerous place in the 1800s. And since firearms were expensive and difficult to repair, a large knife was vital for hunting and home defense. This particular knife had an outsized curved blade and was named for the man who made it famous, American frontiersman Jim Bowie. The Bowie knife, also known as the Arkansas toothpick, was designed by a blacksmith named James Black. The design was unique, but it was Jim Bowie's exciting knife fights that made the weapon famous. Jim Bowie's reputation for knife fighting took shape in 1827 after a bloody encounter known as the Sandbar Duel. In the unfolding brawl, Bowie was shot in the hip, stabbed in the chest, and clobbered in the head with a pistol. Fighting back with his knife, Bowie managed to disembowel his adversary and cut off the arm of another attacker. Remarkably, Bowie survived, and as newspapers reported vivid details of the attack, orders started to pour in for Bowie knives. The significant feature that makes the Bowie knife different than other knives from that era is that it's got a clip point. This is the clip point. It takes the very tip and puts it more or less on the center axis of the knife. Putting the tip in the center made it easier for thrusting and fighting with. And they put an edge on the back of that clip and an edge in the front, and so you could cut both ways. Is it stainless, or what is it? It's just not stainless. It's not the same high-quality steel you'd find in your kitchen for your kitchen knives. Sure. These aren't meant to hold an edge. These are meant to uh, be abused and then maintain their shape. So yeah, they do rust, so you got to keep them clean and dry. Let's bring in today's marksman. And if you think this guy doesn't know anything about primitive weapons, you'd be wrong. Every week, we invite a marksman to the range to test the weapons and give us a practical perspective on these arms. Meet Frank Campana. A former NYPD officer of 24 years, Frank is an expert marksman, and he applies his precision and accuracy skills to primitive weapons. 
He's competed with a bow and arrow in archery contest and learned to hunt with spears while living in the bush with a tribe in Zimbabwe. Jack Dagger, Frank. How are you, Jack? I'm great. Good to meet right. you, man. What's up, Frank? Colby, good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Here's what you guys are going to do. I'm going to send you to the range with all three of these. I want you to field test them, because ultimately, I'm going to get you to grade all three of these weapons, sort of like a report card. All right. Okay. Then I'm going to come tag up with you guys, and we're going to have a friendly little competition with these. The main thing is just have a good time, I will. all right? And try not to stick this guy. I'll you guys, try. start with a Bowie knife. I'll join you in a bit. Great. That sounds great. See you soon. Thanks, Colby. Our marksman and expert will go to the range and test all three weapons. Then I'll join them, and we'll have a friendly competition. First up, the Bowie knife. Well, when I first heard that I would be throwing knives, I was a little surprised, but it, yeah, it was something I wanted to learn. Now, Colby sent me over here with this Bowie knife. It is an historically accurate representation of the knife from the early frontier era. However, we're not going to throw this one. We are going to throw these. These are about 14 and a half, 15 inches long and they're based on a traditional Bowie design. Most throwing knives are a single piece of metal between 12 and 16 inches long and weighing between a half pound and a pound. These knives are less prone to breakage and have a more even distribution of weight. Throwing knives are dull on the edges, which allows the knife to be gripped by the blade. Throwing a knife with a spin throw is easier than a non-spin throw but there must be enough distance allowed for the knife to spin end over end and hit the target with its point. If the knife overspins or underspins, it will fail to stick the target. Most of the throwing that you'll ever do recreationally, you'll be holding the handle of that knife. You're going to reach up, throw it. It's going to make one spin, stick in the target. So from here, we're going to stand back another four feet. So let's try here okay. and see what happens. Okay. Now, don't take a step. Stay here, right? Right. OK. Good. Again, Frank sticks the first knife. And then he starts throwing like a crazy m OK. You got a lot of martial arts background? Yeah, because it's, I, I, I just want to you know, throw it out. And you know, in martial arts, you want to keep everything sharp and quick and in your center. When Frank and I first started working, I realized I've got my work cut out for me a little bit here. It's all right, didn't bounce that far. He has a lot of martial arts background that he has to overcome before he can allow his body to relax into the knife throw. <laughs> he needs to slow the bleep down with his delivery. You're just accelerating it carefully versus trying to yeah. throw it down range. When you throw it, you just don't have control over it. But if you just allow the weight of the knife to do the work, well, then you can throw all day. I have to say, when I watched Jack throw the knives, it made it click in my mind a little bit more. I think the first thing I noticed was that he was using no energy at all to throw the knife. It almost looked as if the knife didn't even have the energy to make it to the target, and it would just fly through the air and stick point on. So that put it in my mind, OK, just calm down a little bit, slow down. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, just nice. do it again. Well, it exactly. feels good when you finally it does. And look you at get it. a good stick. It couldn't be straighter. It's perfect. You know? Jim Bowie would be proud. He would be. Careful. And when you yeah, pull like was, that, yeah. see how it kicked the yep. handle up a lot? Yep. If you leave everything forward, right. the handle will remain straight. Perfect. Good. Good. Finally, Jack brought me up to the level where I stuck 9 out of 10. And that really felt good. Perfect. 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 That's what I'm talking about. But if you had to ask me for a grade on the knife, I would give the knife a C. You have to find your distance and find your line and get your rotation down. And I had a hard time hitting the target uh, point first. I got it. I know you've got it. OK. From here on out, you still might be a little bit erratic, but just through repetition, it's going to get more into your muscle memory. So you're only going to be more successful and more consistent. OK. Cool. You got it. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right. We've already looked at the Bowie knife. Next up is the early American tomahawk. But first, a Top Gun's bullet point. Knife throwing can be entertaining or competitive, depending on the target that is used. In both disciplines, 
the thrower must consider accuracy, distance, rotation, and placement. In competition, knives are thrown at a wooden stump painted with concentric circles. Points are given for sticking the knife close to the bullseye. For entertainment, the knife thrower must find a suitable target to display his skill. A live subject heightens the danger in the performance. The lady must remain very still as the knives hit all around her. Results are in from the Bowie knife. Frank managed to stick nine out of 10, but didn't give it a positive review. I can find your distance and find your line. And I had a hard time hitting the target uh, point first. Next weapon to field test, the Native American tomahawk. All right, Jack, tomahawk. The tomahawk was one of the most dangerous weapons in the Native American arsenal. It was used as a tool and a weapon. They originally attached a sharpened stone to a wooden shaft. Europeans later introduced steel-forged axe heads, which Native Americans made into tomahawks that were stronger and more durable. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, they were devastating weapons. They could also be thrown with great accuracy. For ceremonies, a hole drilled down the handle also served as a peace pipe, a powerful symbolic choice, a pipe for peace or a tool for war. I mean, this had to be a pretty versatile tool back in the day. Absolutely. Hundreds of years before the Bowie knife came around, this was the had-to-have implement for any pioneer American. They used it for skinning. They used it for protection, for fighting. They used it uh, for darn near everything. The tomahawk specifically, has it been used in any more modern warfare than what the uh, the Native Americans used it? Absolutely. It was not exactly standard issue, but the special kind of tomahawk were used in Vietnam. Soldiers in Vietnam were equipped with the latest 20th century weaponry, but some still carried tomahawks. Today's modern soldiers in special units are trained in the use of tomahawks. They've been carried into action in Iraq and Afghanistan. And SWAT teams are finding ways to use this powerful tool in urban combat. So which one's easier to throw between the knife and this one? I definitely say the tomahawk is easier to learn how to throw. It just basically throws itself. Yeah. And because of that reason, I always teach knife throwing first. If you throw a hawk first and get all cocky and feel like, oh, I can do anything, and then you switch to the knife, you're just going to get frustrated because it's a lot more difficult. All right, Jack, Frank is, uh, is waiting down at the range to take the tomahawk. You guys have some fun teaching me a thing or two. You got it. See all you right. soon, my friend. I'll check in with you in a bit. Hey, Frankie. Yes, sir. Don't worry, my friend. So what, what do you have in store for me next? One of my favorite things in the world, the tomahawk. Throwing a tomahawk is actually easier than you might think. With a balanced throwing knife, the center of gravity is the middle of the knife itself. The point must rotate around this center and be correctly oriented to stick in the target. With a thrown tomahawk, the center of gravity is located near the steel head. The handle rotates around this point. This weighted head takes a nearly direct path to the target. A tomahawk's blade edge is larger than the point of a knife, increasing the chances of a successful stick. Right. Allow it to remain square. Reach up, straight forward over the top. Okay. My first few throws, I threw the tomahawk right over the target. And Jack uh, pointed out to me that what I was doing, I was aiming with my hand. So when you aim with your hand, the head of the tomahawk was still, was six inches or so above the target. So now he had me lower my hand and aim with the head of the tomahawk. And when I did that, it was like magic. Bingo. OK. OK, crazy successful. A hundred times better than throwing knives. Just, he gets it. We're having a really good time. Perfect. If there were a bullseye, the chin of that blade would yeah. be digging into it. Right. Let's pull these, man. OK. You're getting it. So now that Frank gets the concept of sticking a tomahawk at one spin, I'm going to start showing him some things to challenge him, some trick shots. This next trick throw is just like the overhand throw upside down. And then chipping your weight back, shift your weight forward, come underneath a little bit, and really stretch forward. But feel 
Right. The weight of that head as it rises up, well, it wants to, it almost has to come out this way. It's got to come out that way, yeah. It just feels really awkward, and it feels like you won't have enough power to, um, you know, to stick it in the target, but you really don't need much energy at all. Bingo. Oh, cool. <laughs> How cool is that? That's very cool. Go over there. Let's get that right target. OK. It's a little bit higher, so if you hit the very bottom of that target, that's fine. So aim the same way. Aim the same way. Oh, dude, how'd that feel? There we go. OK, now let's go on to the crazy throw. OK. I call it the crazy throw because it's kind of crazy. It's crazy? <laughs> it kind of is crazy. The final trick throw that I want Frank to learn is the sidearm across the body throw, which I find to be the most difficult because it's it's the least like a normal tomahawk throw. You can put a lot of torque on this and, and really erratically throw the tomahawk right. all over the place. Right. So you really want to make sure that you're sending blade in a range horizontally, very carefully. And I'm like, this is the crazy throw. There's no way Frank's going to get this one right off the bat. We're going to have to work the hardest on this one, and it's going to make everything else seem a lot easier. Give it a shot. <laughs> now that, that was badass. <laughs> Lo and behold, this becomes Frank's easiest tomahawk throw. Wow. That's I, nice. Yeah, there buddy. There we go. And he's just defying the laws of physics all the way around. And he's confidently and powerfully sticking this sidearm throw, which is a very difficult throw for most people. And he's just nailing it left and right like he's been doing it all his life. God. <laughs> You're throwing this with tremendous power, but you really are able to focus yeah, in a linear yeah. fashion. Yeah. Like, when I do this sidearm, I'm nuts. Yeah, I'm lucky fun. to get the stick. It's difficult for me to keep it horizontally, but you have this yeah. amazing control over something that's like, that's like That's my gladiator blood. My <laughs> Roman gladiator blood. Yeah, I'll tell you, I enjoyed the tomahawk much more than I did the knife, probably because I did better with the tomahawk. Now, if I had to grade the tomahawk, I would give the tomahawk an A. I didn't have much experience throwing a tomahawk, and it was actually more fun than I thought it would be, being able to stick the tomahawk. It's pretty fun, huh? Awesome. It's a lot of fun. Well, cool. We'll grab those two hawks, get a little bit more practice, then I'll see you in a minute. Sounds good. OK, good job, Thanks. buddy. Thanks, Jack. We're testing three primitive weapons, the Bowie knife, Native American tomahawk, and the prehistoric atlatl. But first, a Top Gun's bullet point. The word tomahawk comes from the Native American Powhatan language. It is their name for an ax, but the ax didn't originate in North America. Primitive people first made axes of stone. Next came copper, then bronze. In the fifth century, axes were deadly weapons used in war. By 1000 AD, axes were being made of iron. Medieval knights wielded engraved battle axes for their brutal encounters. And often, nobles were put to death with an executioner's axe. It was considered an honorable way to die. Back on the range, former New York policeman Frank Campana shares his evaluation of the tomahawk. I didn't have much experience throwing a tomahawk, and it was actually more fun than I thought it would be. Up next, the atlatl a weapon from prehistoric time that put humans in a position to dominate the animal world. All right, Jack, I know you've been dying to tell me all about this atlatl. Well, this is by far the oldest high-tech weapon system known to man. It's roughly 14,000 years old, but some historians have evidence that leads them to believe that it could be three or four times older than that. Somewhere in the Stone Age, as early man struggled to survive, a tool was developed that changed hunting forever. This two-foot wooden atlatl became an extension of a hunter's arm, providing a greater throwing arc for his dart, giving much more energy for distance and speed. With the atlatl, hunting a large animal, such as a mastodon, became safer. Thrown from a distance, the sharpened obsidian arrowhead could penetrate the thick-skinned animal, giving him a mortal wound. This really is sort of the weapon that put us on top of the food chain. That's right. We became a more successful species after that point. Right. So they went from kind of gatherers to efficient elite hunters with the atlatl. And it was used 
for a greater period of time than any other weapon system in the history of the planet. Really? This predates archery by about 10,000 years. Does anybody still hunt with these? Yeah. Uh, people in Africa still hunt with these. All across the South, wild boar hunting is uh, becoming more and more popular using that ladle. You know what this thing reminds me of? What? You know when you're at the dog park and you have one of those ball throwers that you chunk the uh, tennis ball with? Yep. It's kind of reminiscent of that, It no? uses the same technology. Yeah. That's right. Because you can't throw anything with just your arm as far as you could with having basically two arms. The atlatl is an extra arm and joint. The science behind the atlatl is the combination of the wooden stick and the flexible dart. When the hunter throws with the atlatl, the dart flexes, compressing like a spring. This stored energy is instantly released, pushing the dart away from the atlatl at a speed of 100 miles per hour or more. The length of the atlatl can also affect the speed of the dart. A longer piece of wood will increase the throwing arc and hence the speed. The dart feathers serve to keep the trajectory straight. Some scientists speculate that the effectiveness of atlatl hunting led to the extinction of the woolly mammoth. We'll go find Frank, get him used to throwing the atlatl, and I'm gonna come tag up with you guys. We're gonna have a friendly little competition. With and I'm definitely gonna need some tutoring on all of these weapons. Okay, Colby, see you in a bit. All right. When I heard I was throwing something called an atlatl, I didn't even know what one looked like. So that was my experience with, uh, with that weapon. Now, this is the most historically accurate representation of the kind of darts that were used in the late stone era. It's a piece of a willow branch that's been straightened over a fire. You heat it up until you get all the bends out of it. And then we've got uh, two pheasant feathers right. touching. And the fore shaft is tipped with a piece of chipped obsidian glass. Is this made uh, to come out in your prey? Yeah, this is, this is known as the interchangeable fore shaft system. The darts <laughs> took a long time to make so you're going to keep the same darts all the time. Oh, okay. But if this goes into an animal, and you can see it has kind of a barbed tip right, there, right. it's not going to come back out again. This obsidian glass is crazy sharp. It's sharper than a surgeon's scalpel. A surgeon's scalpel can be honed down to about 7 microns. Obsidian glass can go down to 2 microns. We're not going to throw this one, because right. this is basically a museum replica piece, more or less. I'm gonna take the four shafts off of it for safety so we don't cut ourselves with it. And let's take a look at the atlatls themselves. Jack had me choose which atlatl handle I uh, preferred. And I found the one that felt most comfortable to me, but it's still a very awkward feeling. Come stand over here on the side. I'm gonna give you one dart. And the easiest way to load these darts, take the dart in your left hand, put the tip in the dirt. Now you slide the butt of that dart down that groove and hook it. There you go. Right. Now it's time for Frank to try out the atlatl, which I think is going to be the hardest of the three things so far. So I'm a little bit cautious, but I'm ready. Now orient this tip towards the target downrange, just a hair higher than the bullseye. And as, as quickly as you can, swat it all the way down and through towards the ground. Step. It's just strange, because your tendency, you want the dart to go, you know, to go fast, so your tendency is to throw it like a ball. But you have to sort of guide the dart. Yeah, man. How'd that feel? Good. Very good. OK, second throw. We've already got you on the target. Uh, grab another dart. I bet I'm the first person from Yonkers to ever throw an atlatl. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Frank's very third dart just hit with authority. Launch. Nice. And I'm like, come on. I'm starting to hate this guy a little bit because my learning curve was way steeper than this. That's it. Yeah, look at that. That's an inch away from the yellow, man. I mean, let's not get excited or cocky. Just do it again. I'm just going to pretend that that's a mastodon. If you like. And I have to hit it. Oh, man. See, I'm with my friend Luigi, and we're hunting mastodon. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, Frank. There you oh, go. dude. You're a ringer, man. I did feel much more confident at the end of the session. Just keep drilling this. Yes. But it still is a very awkward weapon to me, and I would give it the C. I really didn't think I would be able to hit anything with it. It is tricky. It is a tough weapon to learn. From where I'm standing, that target looks like a porcupine. You've really picked this up Thanks. quickly. Thanks. You taught me a lot. Let's go back got and it. see Colby. we got to get ready for this competition, yep. OK? You got it. Let's go. So far on this episode of Top Guns, three primitive weapons have been tested. The Bowie knife, the Native American tomahawk, 
finally, the Stone Age Atlatl. Marksman Frank Campana summed up his experience with the Atlatl. Yeah. I really didn't think I would be able to hit anything with it. Oh, man. It still is a very awkward weapon to me. I did feel much more confident at the end of the session. Now it's time for me to hit the range and review the weapons before the shoot-off. All right, fellas. You had some range time with all three primitive weapons, Frank. What do you think of the throwing knife? A lot of fun, very difficult. It's a lot harder than Jack makes it look. I'm going to need some help with this. Let's head over to the range. It may right. take me a while. Come on. Okay. I've never thrown a knife before of any kind, uh, not in anger, not for sport. Show me how to throw these things. You got it, my friend. Anytime you're picking up a weapon for the first time that you are completely unfamiliar with, it's always best to just accept what the instructor is telling you and try to put that into practice. Now stand up to this front line here with your toe and take sort of a forward fighting stance. Your hips are square, your knees are bent. You're holding the knife like a handshake. Shift your weight backwards and forwards. Lift awkwardly high above your head. And then as you come forward, let gravity help you. Snap your wrist at the end, throw through the log round, and then keep stretching. That's it. Like that? Thunk. And just sticks it right in the target. And I'm like, yeah, like that. Do it again. Perfect. Thunk. And sticks the next one on the target. I'm like, yeah, like that too. Do that again. That's it. Good. And he proceeds to stick like nine out of ten knives, and it's just he's immediately got the concept of the knives. That's it, man. Okay, cool. <laughs> I think you got this down. Yeah. Looking pretty good. All right. Yeah. Good. We transition from the knife to the tomahawk, and this thing feels good. And the weight, the balance, all the weight being up on the top, it just feels good. I knew I was going to like that tomahawk as soon as I grabbed one. Go ahead and hold it the same way you did the knife. You're going to feel the end of the handle just inside your palm. OK. And you're going to put your thumb right on the side, like you did with the oh, knife. Oh, so you wrap it around. Uh-huh. Good luck, Colby. Thanks, Frank. I think you helped him. <laughs> that was good. I like good. the tomahawk. OK, hold on. Now, Murphy's Law dictates, so we never throw more than one tomahawk at the same target if it sticks. So let's go ahead and shift over to this chewed up palm round. Now, notice how the tomahawk shot high on that one. Right. A lot of times, people aim a hawk the same way they aim a knife, and that's with their hand. With a knife, the center of rotation is the middle of the blade, roughly, you know? Holby was really listening to Jack. Come on, come on over here to this. You're supposed to just finesse it, lowering your arm. See, look, I'm even, even now I'm not following through. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to lock my elbow, and I don't want to, I don't want to leave my arm out there. Now draw it out and bring that head back down. Your hand is going to come a little bit lower than you expect, but the target is dead on the bullseye. For the record, first three throws. <laughs> <laughs> All three of them stuck in the log well, oh, but, do it but we haven't competed. This is not the competition. This is just the I'm practice. just saying, this is the first time I've ever thrown a tomahawk, okay. and I just stuck all three. Well, maybe you had a good coach. You know, he's a grown man, and to see how excited he got, you know, it just reminded me, you know, how I felt. And you realize, like, we're, we're grown men, uh, you know, but we're still kids. Tomahawks and throwing knives are one thing. The atlatl is where it's at today. The atlatl was the most uncomfortable out of the three primitive weapons. But again, I came into this without any experience. So that is when you're a blank canvas. So when you have an instructor like Jack Dagger, you just listen to him. Now, the way to load an atlatl, I'll just go ahead and stick it in the dirt in front of you. Is this the way I hold it? That's the way you hold it. Yep, that's exactly right. It's a split finger grip. So it's basically like making a fist on that thing. Oh, yeah, OK. And now you notice there's a spur. Hook that spur in the butt of the dart. OK. So now get in a comfortable position, your legs almost together, like you're standing awkwardly upright. The interesting thing about throwing the atlatl is you feel like you look really weird throwing it. I don't know if that makes sense, but it doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. You just feel like you look like a dork throwing it. I'm nervous, Jack. Don't be nervous. Very intimidated by this weapon. <laughs> oh! Ah, very nice. First shot. Clipped it on the bottom. Barely. That looks good. <laughs> Barely, but I'll take it. I was a bit timid starting off with the atlatl and I wasn't putting a lot of zing on it. And uh, after I sort of got dialed in on my distance and, and sort of the motion, uh, the rhythm of it, then I just uh, put a little more heat on it. 
Get the tip a little bit higher. At the oh! <laughs> Booyah! That was money. All right, just do it again. Frank! Very good. You're in trouble, brother. I don't know about that. Let's see. I think Colby takes instructions better than I do. I, I don't like to listen to anybody. Maybe it's just the, you know, flaw I have, but Colby really seemed to pay attention to Jack and do what he said. And I think Colby mastered the fundamentals a lot faster than I did. You, I mean, you want to put a lot of velocity on. So unlike the tomahawk and the knife, you're really not trying to muscle those. Are the is this thing different than that? Absolutely not. No, it's not. No. Okay. Think of it as a double action revolver with the longest pull in history. And at any point, if you try to muscle that pull, you're never going to hit what you're aiming for. Okay. So when as you step into it, you have to remain relaxed, 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 and then the power comes from your wrist. That's a very scientific approach. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. That yeah. felt good. Now, did Look you, at that. Did you see how it wiggled when it left the, yeah, yeah, the atlatl? Yeah. That means you propelled it properly. But I can feel the whip in it much more. Atlatl. It came right over there the top. I'm liking this atlatl. <laughs> <laughs> Money. Wow. And then you guys are going to put me to shame in the competition. I could already tell that Colby is even more relaxed. He's like a ringer. It's like he's been doing this all his life, and he just hasn't told anybody. I like this atlatl. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, it, it is, is fun. fun. It is. It's like lawn darts from hell. I think I'm going to stick with my 1911, but I like it. Yeah. I know. Yes, there yes. There it is. See that Stop coming it. off the of Ten ring, baby. <laughs> All right, yeah. Jack, Jack nice instruction, now. my man. In there. That was very yeah. good. I like it. End on a good note. Yeah. You've got some confidence with the atlatl. Let's compete. All right, let's nice. do it. The Tomahawk is one of the most devastating melee weapons in the history of the planet. It can deliver an amazingly powerful blow. Despite its relatively small, four-inch cutting surface, the Tomahawk's overall length is what gives it its incredible power. It extends your arm by about 18 inches, so you can get over protective shields or behind armor. There's a lot of different methods for fighting, but very few, if any, ever involved letting go of the Tomahawk. Now, let's talk about the competition, Frank, because I'm going to address you. We might let Jack in on this, but this is between me and you. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to give you 10 throwing knives. OK. Six tomahawks. Right. And five atlatl darts. You'll get a point for each target you hit. That Jack? Sounds good. Can I get in on this? I'll let you in on this All action, right. but I'm going to have to handicap you. Uh, OK. Because you are the expert here. So you're going to have respect. to be blindfolded. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wait, let's, let's, let's negotiate that. I don't know if I can stick uh, an atlatl dart blindfolded at range, but what if I just like doubled the distance or, or stood further away or something like that? Is that agreeable I to think you he's guys? A ringer. It's fine with me. Let's kick it off with the throwing knife, guys. Come on. Here we go. I would say that Colby has a slight advantage because he's more comfortable with the knives and tomahawks. However, Frank could really upset this because he's way more competent with the atlatls. Good luck, Frank. Nice, Frank, with a little heat on that throw. <laughs> nice. That's as straight as it could be. Feeling it. Ah, oh, so sad. Oh, oh man. Not good. Nice. Five. Nice. Ah. One knife left. Not enough rotation. Frank, stick. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Stop, Frank. Count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Now it was Colby's turn at the knife competition. His white teeth shining in the sunlight. He seemed very at ease. He went through his motions. He has like this rocking motion. And then he throws the knife. Careful. There you go. Nice. Nice. It's all right, you just hung on to it a little longer. Last knife, Kobe. Yeah, man. There it is. Nice job. Jack, it's your turn, buddy. All right. Let me get the uh, my performance enhancing device. 
I kind of feel bad for the guy now because we blindfold him and tell him to start throwing at a log round. He doesn't even know which direction he's aiming. Okay. Good luck. And we're not giving him a whole lot of coaching on this. Nice. Right in the middle, you're good. Ready? Right there, perfect distance. Okay, this nice. is embarrassing, Frank. I know. We're gonna get thumped. Oh, he's on a roll, that's four. Five. <laughs> oh, dropped one. I'll pick it up. Oh, <laughs> wide left. Nine, yep. On. Getting cocky there, yeah, Jack. Yeah, I am. Nice. That's perfect. Wide left and a bit high. Oh, nice. One more knife. Yeah, nice, Jack. Woo. Eight of 10, beaten by a blind man. <sighs> the guy's blindfolded, and he ties me throwing eight out of 10. Are you kidding me? Going in to the second weapon. Jack and I are tied up at eight. Frank has how many? Six. Six. All right, Frank. You're going to have six tomahawks. Good luck. Thank you. Whack. Ooh. Nice. That's one. Two for two, Frank Campana. Oh! Ah! Oh, just low. There yeah. it is. Nice. OK. Good job, Frank. I only got three out of six. I expected to do much better than that. I train four or five times a week in the martial arts. And I think uh, that was a detriment, not to make excuses for myself. It is what it is. Nice. Mm. Yeah, man. Good. Man, I'm nervous. <laughs> nice. Yes. Okay. Very competitive, Frank. Yep. I don't like that. to lose. I see that. Oh, yeah, it counts. We're counting that it counts one. It's stuck. It's not pretty. Wow. Ah, nice. Clean run. Yeah, yeah baby. Good stuff. Good shot. Good stuff. All right, Jack Dagger. The pressure's uh, on, brother. Yep. So then Jack steps up with the tomahawk. Once again, we blindfold him. Because this guy, without a blindfold, there wouldn't even have been a competition between the three of us. Good luck, cowboy. Thank you, my friend. Muscle memory, don't let me down. You got it, Jack. Wide left. Oh, nice. <sighs> Wide right. Perfect. Nice. Last throw. Ah, dang it. Yeah, you I made know, it, I dude. Nice right. shot. Frank, you have nine. Nine. Jack, you have 12. I'm out with a bit of a lead at 14. How'd you get 14? But the great equalizer is up next, the atlatl. Now I'm behind, the pressure's on. Theoretically, I still could have scored enough points to you know, put myself back in the ball game and at least tie Colby. Now here are the rules with this, Frank. You got a target down there with three rings on it. The outer ring is worth a point, the orange ring is worth two points, and the center bullseye is worth three. So. So I have a chance. You got an opportunity here, my chance. friend. OK. You can do it. So you Weird. have nine points now, and you have five atlatl darts, OK? OK. You guys ready? Stand by. Good. You're lined up. OK. Good to go. Just low. That's one. There you go. Oh, ah. just low. Higher than a bullseye. Oh. That's it. There it is. Now we're Got talking. It. Two points for Frank. I got one. Frank has 11. Oh, oh wide right. You know, I'm trying to fit, you know, deliver a punch. I think I would have done a lot better if I just, you know, was able to just listen to Jack and not have this combative mentality in my in my head. Nice and nice and easy. Feet together. Tip a little higher. There you go. Ooh. That. Oh. There you go. There it is. Nice. Whoa. Oh. oh. Yeah, you touch the yellow. You're right. Oh, it's God, orange. Barely. Look at that. So six. Uh, 16, it. 18, 20. 20. Total of 20. It. I'll take it. Dad gum. Jack Dagger. The pressure is on, brother. Pressure is on Jack Dagger. <laughs> Let's see what you're made of.
In this final stage, Jack is not going to be blindfolded. The only handicap we're giving him is we're going to back him up. I have 20 points. Frank, sorry, you're sort of out of it. You're out of the loop. <laughs> you're in you're, the loop. You're sitting on 12. 12. Well, I got to hit. Eight to tie, nine to win. Oh, man. Nine points to beat him. All I have to do is stick three bullseyes from twice the distance, 60 feet. No big deal. I thought you were left-handed. Whatever made you think I was left-handed? You want to try it left-handed? I do, most certainly do not want to try it left-handed. Don't you have the wrong foot forward? All right, Jack. Come on, you Sorry. Come on. I'm just it's messing with you. It's all good. It's all good. Come on. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, oh just man. High. That wow. looked nice, though. Yeah, that's impressive. There you go. There it is. There you go. Nice. See, now you, you dialed in. Ooh, nice. All right, Jack, your fifth and final dart. Tell you what, you stick in that bullseye from this distance, you win. There you go. Oh! Okay, so, 16, 17. You gave it a good run, Jack. Close. You earned it, my friend. Good 20, going, buddy. 17. Good going. Congratulations. Right. Well, I'll tell you, even though I lost, I had an awesome time. Yeah, it'd be nice to win. Who doesn't want to win? No one wants to lose. And I'll tell you something. If I ever see a Mastodon on South Broadway in Yonkers, that Mastodon is dead meat. Good All right, day. before you guys take off, Frank, they call him Jack Dagger for a reason. Can you stick a knife from this distance in that target? Oh, I reckon, yeah. We back him up to 55 feet and have him chuck one of those throwing knives, see if he can stick it. They don't call him Jack Dagger for nothing. Oh! Wow. <laughs> Jack Dagger? God, that is a bullseye at 55 feet. Wow. Wow. Frank, always a pleasure. Got to rub it in, right? Good to see you. You, you are buying the stakes, whether that's here or on the East Coast. Yep, you're buying definitely, it. Definitely, buddy. Always nice a pleasure. You Jack yeah. Dagger, thanks for the instruction, yep. man. I had fun today. Yeah, I appreciate definitely. it. We'll see you guys down Thank the road. You, Jack. Cool. See you, Kobe.